Good morning, everyone. I greet you today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I indeed count it a privilege and an honor to be able to share God's word with God's people. Our text this morning will be coming from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 9. So let's, let us focus our attention to Matthew chapter 9. And we're going to be looking at verses 18 through 26. Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 through 26. And there in Matthew's gospel, we hear these words saying, while he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples and behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the friends of his garment. For she said to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And the crowd, and when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose, and the report of this went out throughout all the district. This morning, I want to talk from the subject, the authority of Jesus Christ. The authority of Jesus Christ. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come today thanking you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for another opportunity to gather and worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we ask now that your spirit will fill this space. God, hide me behind the cross. Lead me and guide me through and by thy precious spirit. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Prepare us now, O Lord, to hear and receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk today about the authority of Jesus Christ. Scholars suggest that the book of Matthew serves as the, an ideal bridge in that it connects the Old Testament to the New Testament. Matthew, in his gospel, he points to the readers the very fact that Jesus is the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. He points his readers to the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. The one who has come to seek and to save the lost preaching repentance and informing them that the kingdom of God 
is at hand. And in talking about the authority of Jesus Christ, that word authority, it points us to the power within. Yeah. The, the, the right, the ability, the power to act. And, and I want to let you know today that the God we serve is a sovereign God. Yeah, yeah. God, he is sovereign. God, he has the right, he has the ability, and he has the power to do according to his purpose and his will. And so as we look at our text this morning, our text, it comes within a series of teaching, whereas Matthew introduces a series of miracles that show the authority of Jesus Christ. As we look at this text, I want to call your remembrance or call your attention this morning back to Matthew chapter 8. Because it's there in Matthew chapter 8 that we see Jesus doing, doing a series of miracles that points to his teaching abilities and his healing power. For a moment, for the time that is ours to share, let us look at these series of miracles that Matthew presents to us. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 3 and 4, we see Jesus as he heals a leper. There, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 3 and 4, we see that Jesus heals a leper by touching him. And in doing so, this shows Christ's authority over both disease and law. In that day, anyone with leprosy was unclean. Anyone who had leprosy suffered greatly. The law required that, that a leper be isolated from the rest of society. It was unlawful for anyone to come into contact with a leper. In fact, anyone with leprosy had to cry out, unclean, 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 so that others could avoid them. Because anyone with leprosy, anyone who came in contact with a person with leprosy would defile themselves if touched by the leper. But in our text, we see Jesus. Jesus heals a man with leprosy by touching him. He tells the leper to go and, and, and show himself to the priest. And in doing so, this shows that Christ has authority over disease and that he also is committed to observing and obeying law. Next, in this series of teaching, we see the great faith of the centurion. There in Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 7, we have a centurion that comes to Jesus. He comes to Jesus saying, Lord, my servant is paralyzed at home, 
He's suffering. He's in great pain. And Jesus says to the centurion, he says, I will come and heal him. But the centurion, he says to Jesus, he says, I am not worthy mm, to have you come into my home. But if you just say the word right where you are, my servant will be healed. See, this centurion, he understood authority because he was in authority himself. If we look at uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse, verse number 9, it says, for I too. I'm a man under authority. I have soldiers under me. And if I say to one, go, he goes. And if I say to another, come, he comes. And if I say to my servant, do this, then he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled. He marveled and said to those who followed him, truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. We see here in these series of teachings that Christ has authority, authority over disease and authority over the law. But we also see in these teachings that Christ has authority over the entire earth. Yeah, he has authority over nature and the entire earth. And he has the power to cast out demons. And just for a moment, I want to look at Christ's authority over nature and the entire earth. You remember when Jesus calms the storm. It's right there in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. Jesus and the disciples, they are out at sea. They are out at sea and a storm rises while they are out at sea. A storm so strong that, that the waves are beginning to, to, to come inside and overtake the boat. And the disciples, they go to Jesus and they say to Jesus, Lord, save us. We are perishing. And Jesus, he says to them, he says, why are you afraid, O ye of little faith? And then Jesus, he gets up and he rebukes the winds and the sea. And there is a great calm. And the disciples, the men, the disciples, they, they marvel and they say, what manner of man is this that even the seas, the winds obey him? This lets us know, my brothers and sisters, it lets us know that, that, that we serve a God who is in control of all things. Yeah, we serve a God who is in control of all things. And as we shift our focus from chapter 8 to chapter 9, there in verses 18 through 26, it points us to another series of miracles that demonstrates Christ's authority. We now have in mind that, 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 that Jesus has already displayed his authority over sickness. 
Jesus has already displayed his authority over sin and evil spiritual powers. And now in chapter 9 verses 18 through 26, we see that Jesus demonstrates authority over disease and death. Yeah. All three of the synoptic gospels report of this where Jesus restores life back to Jairus' daughter. And, 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 and all three of the synoptic gospels in, in showing how Jesus restores life back to Jairus' daughter, they also include with it the report of Jesus healing a woman with an issue of blood. And so we have in our scripture a little girl whose life is restored and a woman with an issue of blood who is healed when she touches the hem of his garment. Just for a moment, I want to make mention of the woman with the issue of blood. The text lets us know that for 12 years, this woman had suffered with her issue. For 12 long years, she suffered with her issue. And if we read Mark's gospel in chapter five, verses 21 through 43, we find out that this woman had suffered many things from many physicians. She had suffered many things from many mm, physicians. This lets us know that the woman had sought after a cure for her condition. And Mark informs us that that this woman dealing with this issue, she had spent all that she had. Yeah. And in spending all that she had, in dealing with this issue, spending all that she had, she got worse rather than getting better. This paints the picture that she lost more than she gained. Mm. She lost more than she gained. She lost her physical strength. She lost her finances. And just like the leper in chapter eight, this woman had to have identify herself as being unclean, unclean, unclean. She had to walk around identifying herself as unclean. And, and thanks be to God, we, we see a woman in our text that even though she had to identify as being unclean, even though she had lost her physical strength, and even though she lost her finances, thanks be to God that in this text, we see a woman who has not lost her hope. Yeah, we see a woman who has not lost her faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, Matthew 
chapter 9, verse 21 says that she said to herself, if only I could touch his garment, I would be made well. And Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. This series, this series of teaching, this series of miracles lets us know that Jesus Christ has authority over all things. I pause right here to say this. In this text, we have a little girl who was restored to life. And in this text, we have a woman who is dealing with an issue of blood. And one of the things that this lets us know that it matters not your age. But God can come and deliver and restore you from the youngest one of us to the oldest one of us. God is able to heal, restore and deliver. This text teaches us today that God has authority, thank you, over all things. He has authority over sickness. He has authority over nature. He has authority over evil spirits. He has authority over sin and over death. I'm here to let you know this morning that God has authority. He has power over all things. Hallelujah. And in acknowledging in response and in recognizing Christ's authority, we also have to recognize his power. His power to save us. His power to deliver us. His power to set the captive free. His power to heal and to restore our sin sick souls. I said it once, but I'll say it again. Ultimately, we recognize the authority of God's power over all things. This teaching, this series of miracles, Understand today, it does not just point to physical healings, but it also points to spiritual healings. Understand today that God is able. God is able. God is able to heal. And he has the power and the authority to heal. He has the power and the authority to deliver, to save, and to set the captive free. And so as we move into our time of prayer, as we move into our time of prayer for healing, we pray and we ask the Lord that if it be thy will, that he will heal us this day. James chapter 5 tells us that if any among you are suffering, let him pray. Is any among you cheerful, let him sing songs of praise. Is any among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be 
forgiven.